first I want to start with talking to you about Night Watch Prayer. Night Watch Prayer is the third of Friday to Saturday every single month. And, and Night Watch Prayer is going to be this next weekend. And so I want to invite you to come out. Uh, if you're online, there's an, there's an online option this time. Uh, we've never had online not, Night Watch Prayer. And so we're going to have online Night Watch Prayer. Um, Michelle Passy is going to lead that up. And then also um, we've, we've changed, you know, we've changed the structure. Uh, instead of just being at a few campuses, we're going to have it through all the campuses. Um, eventually, when we open up Hatch, we'll have it at Hatch as well. So if you look in your bulletin, and we'll, we'll drop all of this uh, online as well, but but if you look in your bulletin, you can see the different campuses and, you know, the shift times and everything. And it's shocking to me how many, how many people come out in the middle of the night. I, I'm shocked, you know, and it's like they... People actually come out in the middle of the night, and they're not freaky, scary. They're, they're more like the warrior type, you know? They're, they're, the, they're the intercessors that, you know, the devil is, like, freaked out about, you know? <laughs> so it's like, oh, no, they're here again. All right. <laughs> All right, but uh, Psalm 134, verses 1 and 2, it says, Behold... Bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, who by night stand in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary. Let's do that right now. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. Just that simple thing, blesses the Lord uh, right there. And then Isaiah 56, 7, even them I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. And so I, um, the prophet Isaiah was he was foreseeing um, uh, the modern church that that one of our main functions is to be a house of prayer for all nations. That's because the Lord has given his church authority for all nations. And this is what Jesus was actually yelling about uh, when he overturned the the. Um, the money changers tables in the temple. And this is the thing, you know, he's throwing a temple tantrum and he, he <laughs> like, this is the thing he shouted. He says, you know, for my house shall be a house of prayer for all nations. He's reprioritizing that. And so uh, we've hosted Night Watch Prayer at Harvest Church for way over a decade. Um, and I'm really happy to be going into all the campuses. It's been something we've been talking about for a few months. And we want to do it in such a way to help you enter the prayer experience. Kind of like we were just singing together over the nations. That, In a way, that was like you entering into the prayer experience. Wasn't that, that was so doable, wasn't it? It was very doable, um, and, so, and we did it together, okay? We, we were praying and calling to the nations on behalf of the Lord, on the, in the name of the Lord. And, and so Night Watch prayer is uh, very historical. Most Christians today, they don't realize that observing the regular watches for prayer, that was considered to be a normal part of the Christian life the first few centuries. Um, and these prayer watches, they're designed to maintain the practice of offering God a continual sacrifice of praise and prayer. I just think the whole idea is cool, right? A continual sacrifice of praise and prayer. And it's also how we act as a house of prayer for all nations, and we watch in prayer for the return of the Lord. How many of you know he's coming soon? And so at Night Watch Prayer, each shift, you know, I'm just letting you know what to expect when you come. Each shift is going to combine a time of worship together. Uh, there's going to be a short teaching, discussion, application. There's going to be personal ministry as needed. So this, this one, especially, you want to bring your dream card. Okay, how many got your dream cards? You got your dream cards ready. All right, and so there's going to be personal ministry. And then we're going to pray together uh, for targeted needs. And I'll explain that a little bit. But the reason we're praying together, and I want to start bringing some terminology to you so that you can be educated in why we pray certain in a certain way, okay? And this is going to help you. So the first term that I want to bring to you, the concept, the term, is, is called the prayer of agreement, okay? Everybody say prayer of agreement. Online, say prayer of agreement or type it in, all right? Prayer of agreement, all right? And this is more than just believing the same thing. You know, I agree with you. You agree with me. That's, that's great. Uh, it goes beyond that. Uh, the prayer of agreement is a verb. It's an action that we take. It's a sound that we make, and it's based on Matthew 18, 19. And it says, again, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth concerning anything, they ask, and it'll be done for them by my Father in 
heaven, all right? And that's very, very powerful in and of itself. I mean, you read that. If two of you agree on earth concerning anything they ask, it'll be done for them by my Father in heaven. Now, the word agree in this verse is the word symphonio. It sounds like a symphony, right? Like our word symphony, but the Greek word is symphonio, and it means to sound together, be in unison, uh, agree with, uh, harmonize, you know, make an agreement. And, and so when you think of, of a symphony, all right, how many of you played in a symphony or a band before? A few of you? Okay. So a symphony has a lot of different instruments, and each instrument makes a different sound at different times, and the goal is to make the sound in the proper timing and in harmony. And so in a symphony, every instrument makes a sound, all right? Musicians, they don't just show up with their instrument, sit there, and not play. They all play, and that's the point of being part of the symphony. And so the prayer of agreement, you know, symphonio, symphony, the prayer of agreement involves a sound, your sound, my sound, all right, that's on your notes there. It involves a sound, and something about us praying together establishes it, all right? Say that, say that with me, establishes it. Okay, the Lord is establishing some things, and we're learning how to do that. Um, you know, because everything starts with prayer, right? Everything, even the church uh, started in a prayer room, all right? Everything begins with prayer. And so there's a principle in the Bible about things being established based on the words of two or three. Now, that's in 2 Corinthians 13, 1. Um, you know, it says, this will be the third time I'm coming to you. By the mouth of two or three, uh, two or three witnesses, every word shall be established. Now, the context is different here, but Paul is referring to a principle that is in the Old Testament. Deuteronomy 19.15 says, At the mouth of two witnesses or the mouth of three witnesses shall the matter be established. And so we see this principle, okay, two and three, establishing something, the word of two or three. It's utilized in a lot of different contexts, um, you know, f such as in matters of conflict and discipline, Matthew 8. 15 to 17, moreover, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. Uh, don't Facebook it. Don't, you know, don't. Have you ever had, I've, I've opened up Facebook and saw somebody complaining about me and I'm like, I would like to have that conversation with you. <laughs> All right. Um, but it, you were quiet because you're guilty, huh? We can, have, we can turn this into repentance meaning right now, all right? Uh, if, he, if he hears you, you've gained your brother. If he will not hear it, take with you one or two more, that by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. Uh, if he refuses to hear, tell it to the church, and then there's, uh, you know, the church will deal with it. All right, and so then we see this principle in connection with prayer. Matthew 18, uh, 19 and 20, again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it'll be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. Isn't that nice to know that Jesus is here in the midst of us, okay? Amazingly, Jesus is here in the online, uh, in the online campus, in the midst of, they've come together online. So when you come to night watch prayer, and again, you can see on, on the sheet there, that's every third, uh, every third Friday to Saturday, uh, there's different shifts. It is all night. You can pick a shift that works for you. Um, you don't have to go to the one that's at your campus, but you know, we're just letting you know where the different ones are, so you can, you can make a choice. Um, but when you come, you want to be prepared to make a sound, and you want to be prepared to do it in a group s setting. And what's going to help you, we, we have some help tools for you. Uh, there's going to be an instruction guide. There's going to be uh, prayer points with Bible promises. There's going to be a shift leader, so there'll be somebody to help. And you're going to have this guide right in front of you. And so if you're totally brand new to Night Watch Prayer, you might just sound off just once, okay? And, and that's fine, okay? That, that's great because you're just, you're learning. Um, but we want you to make your sound because you are part of the symphony of prayer here at Harvest Church, amen? Amen. All right, and so when you come to Night Watch Prayer, you're going to want to ask God to do some things. Remember, you're going to have an instruction sheet, and or you're going to want to make a decree, okay? So I'm giving you terminology. Learn the terms. This will help you. It'll make you sharper in prayer, and I'm going to explain um, uh, about de decreeing things in just a bit. All right, but all of this is going to help you, help us to pray in agreement 
stay in agreement. You have the prayer instructions. You're gonna keep praying them through the month until we see you again at the next one. There will be a new set of instructions. Um, but there are different kinds of prayer. There are different kinds. And, and you know, you, you want to know what they are. Uh, one kind of prayer is the prayer of petition, okay? The prayer of petition, and that's where you ask God for something. Okay, real simple. You ask God for something. The Bible instructs us to ask. Matthew 7, 7 and 8, it says, ask, and you will be given, or it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives, and he who seeks, finds, and to him who knocks, it will be open. Okay, so we're instructed to ask, all right? Ask about everything. Ask for everything, all right? Ask, seek, find. Seek, and you'll find. Knock, and it'll be open to you. Now, another way we can pray is either to declare or decree, all right, everybody say declare or decree. You might have heard people say that before. They'll maybe come up here or maybe in a different context. I declare, I decree, and they'll use them interchangeably or one or the other, okay? But I've also found out that a lot of people don't know what it means when they say declare or decree. They don't, they don't know. And so um, I want to explain it to you. Um, before I move forward, is uh, Tamara Polito here? Tamara Polito, are you here I just want to double check um, uh, because I had some. I had a word for you, but if you're not here, you don't get the word. All right, <laughs> all right, okay, that's okay. I'll just push pause on that. I'll hold that. All right. Um, I was just thinking. I'm like, okay. I was just kind of working through this whole this whole um, uh, uh, morning. I was like, well, I need to check and see if she's even here. All right. So. Um, so a, a lot of people begin their prayers by saying, "I declare and decree." Um, you know, and the and the Two words, they have very, very different meanings, uh, but if you can understand what each one means, you can really harness the power of prayer a lot better, okay? Harness the power of the word, the activity a lot better. And so the word declare, it comes from a Hebrew word that means to make known or to set forth an accounting. Um, it's, it's a lot of times, uh, you know, if you travel internationally, and, you know, you go through customs, and what do they ask you? Do you have anything to declare? They're saying, what do you have? That's, that's what they're asking you. What do you have? And there's certain things that they're looking for, uh, you know, to, so they can take action or not action, release you or, or hold you for a little while. <laughs> I remember going through, through um, one, cu one customs, and, and someone who was traveling with me, uh, they, they brought some, some almonds with them, and that just triggered the whole thing, triggered a whole mess, okay, some nuts. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just little nuts. I mean, nothing, no contraband, no anything, just these little packages of nuts. All right, so, so anyway, uh, what do you have? But as it pertains to us spiritually, declarations are what we speak into the atmosphere, okay, what we speak out, you know, that's based on Ephesians 3.10, to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places. Okay, so what, what are we talking about here? These are spirit beings that we are wrestling with on, in prayer, you know, based on Ephesians 6.12. And, and you may not have known that you were doing that, but when you pray, in the name of Jesus, begin to ask God for things, begin to declare and decree things, you are um, beginning to, to wrestle with these powers that are trying to hold hold back the things of God, okay? They're trying to hold, uh, uh, keep, you know, keep this earth in darkness, keep people in darkness. That's, that's what these spirit beings are doing, and you are in a wrestling match, um, uh, you know, and so, so these, this is what they're doing. And so what we're doing when we declare something, we're making known what we already have, okay? We can declare our righteousness. We can declare our salvation. We can declare our uh, victory. We can declare our friendship with God. You know, we're basically saying, this is what I have, all right? And, and, and um, I know who I am. I know what I have, all right? Many times you'll feel like you need to do that. You need to draw these lines. You know, I am a child of God. Um, you know, I am, I've been purchased with the blood of Jesus Christ. I am in friendship with God. He shares his secrets with me. You know, and you, you feel like you, you need to step out and do that. And so in Matthew 6.10, Jesus teaches the disciples to pray. Uh, there's several things in there that he, he 
teaches them to pray, but one in particular is for his kingdom to come and his will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Okay, so in other words, uh, when we pray for his will to be done, then his kingdom is established as a result. And it, this is a really strange thing for us because by God's design, he does not move past the faith of his church. It, that's a very strange thing for us to, to understand that he actually partners with us on that level and that we actually, you know, he gave us the earth. He, he gave us stewardship over the earth. Once Jesus was resurrected, he gave us his name and he said, go. All right. And he gave us stewardship over the earth. He, what, what it was uh, originally in the Garden of Eden and was lost uh, because of disobedience, he gave it back to us. Um, and, and basically, unless we ask for it, unless we, we call it in, uh, it, it doesn't happen. And that's, that's really mind-boggling sometimes that the Lord would actually entrust us, uh, you know, with that much authority, and yet he does. I mean, you might really stink at it, but he still entrusted you. You know what I'm saying? So, so anyway, we've been, we've been uh, uh, you know, it, it, we've been born into God's kingdom, and we are fully empowered, uh, you know, to be successful in God's kingdom. I always laugh. I was like, you know, those days when you just look like you've been through a mess and, and you know, you've got fasting breath and you just, you know what I'm saying? Like you rolled out of bed and went to Walmart and just looked at, looked the whole part, right? Okay. <laughs> Even in that state, I have the fullness of, of the name of Jesus. I have... Uh, all spiritual authority in his name. And, and God is waiting to hear my voice. All right. And so everything starts with prayer. And one of the power tools of prayer is our ability to make a decree. So we've been talking about prayer of agreement. We've been talking about petition. We've been talking about um, declaring. And we, now we're going to talk about decree. And um, uh, when, you, um, when you decree something, you are establishing it. When you decree something, you are establishing it. And so making a decree, it causes the blessings of heaven to be released from heavenly places into our natural realm. Let me give you a quick example so you understand why we need to do that. Do you remember the prophet Daniel? Remember him? So what happened to him? He, was, he saw um, it, from a prophecy in the book of Jeremiah, and it was, you know, it has to do with his people and the release of captivity, and he began to seek the Lord about it. He wanted some understanding. And what happened is he started uh, uh, doing what was called the Daniel Fast. We talked about Daniel Fast. He started doing the Daniel Fast, and he started seeking the Lord and fasting and prayer. And 21 days later, this angel appears, okay, and begins to explain to him uh, you know, what happened in the spiritual realm, the, the first day he began to pray. The first day he began to pray, God released the answer. But there was one of those spirit beings that I told you about, Ephesians 6. There's a, a spiritual being, and it's in the Bible it says the prince of Persia, actually withheld that angel, withheld Daniel's prayer uh, from being answered for 21 days. But Daniel just kept praying and praying and praying and praying until until there was a breakthrough, okay? And so, so you know, uh, when we make that decree, it causes the blessings of heaven. So in that case, Daniel wanted an answer. He needed wisdom on something. Uh, but it causes the blessings of heaven to be released from heavenly places into our natural realm. And so we can begin to decree certain things, okay? We're establishing some, something that, that we know is in the word of God because when it's in the word of God, it's ours, it's decreeable. And so we decree our peace. We decree our health. We decree salvation to our families, uh, we begin to decree over our destiny in the Lord. We begin to decree favor, wisdom, financial abundance, stability, okay? We begin to decree it. We're establishing it. And a decree is defined as an official order issued by a, a legal authority, all right? So let me, get, let me explain it to you naturally so you can understand it spiritually. And so that means um, like a decision that is made by the order of the court it's gonna supersede the desire or the opinion of the defendant, and that could be a fine. It could be a denial of driving privileges. It could be a jail sentence. 
And so, so that's a natural example of what, what happens spiritually, that a decree is defined as an official order issued by legal authority, which would be you and I in the name of Jesus. We're the legal authority. And Job twenty two twenty eight, King James Version, it says, thou shalt also decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee and the light shall shine upon thy ways. All right, so here, that Hebrew word decree Um, uh, here in this passage, it's a command that not only establishes something, but it divides and cuts something down at the same time. All right, did you get that? All right, so establishes something, but it, it, but it divides and cuts something down at the same time. So, so here's the promise. When, when you make a decree, the light of God begins to shine upon all your ways, all right? But the decree begins to cut away It begins to destroy anything the kingdom of darkness has purposed against you. And so, and so when my husband and I began ministering uh, at this church, uh, and that was uh, way before you were born. No, just kidding. <laughs> no. Um, no, it was a long time ago. <laughs> But, and you wouldn't even know it, all right? But this church is very dead, okay? Like, like scary dead, like You know, it was like one of those churches like you just didn't want to go to. And, and so when this church was dead, uh, Ron and I would make these decrees. I'll give you some examples. You know, this, it, it, it was crazy because we were saying the exact opposite of what we're seeing. And so we make these decrees. You know, this church is alive. This church is anointed. People are saved, healed, and delivered here, okay? We're reaching the city. We're influencing nations, all right? We begin to make these decrees, okay? And, and the light of God began to shine on the church, Right? And then, and then uh, you know, all, all the things that the kingdom of darkness had purposed against the church began to be cut away with the decree. And we're just following a pattern that we learned from the Lord, Romans 4, 17. He calls those things that are not as though they were. All right? We're not being weird. Okay? We're just doing it in the order that, that we see God do. He calls things that are not as though they were. You know, and, and when he does that, everything God says comes to pass. All right. When our son was diagnosed with a neurological disorder, he could barely speak, we made the decree. By the stripes of Jesus, David's healed. He's already healed in Jesus' name. That's 1 Peter 2.24. We begin to make the decree over him, begin to cut away what the kingdom of darkness purposed against him. The light of God began to shine on him. Okay, and so it needs to be understood, a decree, it needs to align to God's heart, to God's word. Um, you know, like we don't, we don't make decrees that our stupid neighbor gets what they deserve. We don't make decrees that our boss loses their job so we can have it. <laughs> All right? Way back in the day, there was an old woman here. She didn't like the music here. And she would decree that our worship pastors will move out of town. <sighs> the heart matters, <laughs> all right? Things that are selfish, self-serving, not God-serving, we don't decree those things. We don't decree, all right? And so when we talk about decrees, and this is where I'm getting, gonna start landing it here, um, if there is one thing I want to decree over you and this church and online campus today is that your mountains are gonna move because the breaker has gone before you. Yeah. Amen? And so I want to talk with you about uh, an, one of the names of God, okay? And, and it means he's the Lord of the breakthrough. But one of the names of God is Baal Perazim, and it means the Lord of the breakthrough. Actually, it's plural, the Lord of the breakthroughs, all right? Because you're not just going to one, need one breakthrough. You're going to need many breakthroughs. But he is the Lord of the breakthroughs, all right? And so it comes out of 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 17 to 20, and it says, Now when the Philistines heard that they had anointed David king over Israel, all the Philistines went up to search for David, and David heard of it and went down to the stronghold. And the Philistines also went and deployed themselves in the valley of Raphim. Okay, that's the valley of giants, the valley of terrible ones. So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up against the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hand? And the Lord said to David, Go up, for 
I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into your hand. So David went to Belperazim, and David defeated them there. And he said, the Lord has broken through my enemies before me like a breakthrough of water. The message version says, God exploded on my enemies like a gush of water. All right. And so therefore, he called the name of that place Baal Perazim, the Lord of breakthroughs. Amen. And so the Philistines, they were, um, they were aggressive. They were, uh, you know, warmongering. Um, there's, you know, battles throughout history recorded between them and the Israelites. Uh, after Saul died, King Saul, that was uh, David's predecessor. After Saul died, they seemed to go off grid for a while. But when David was anointed king of Israel, when that anointing came on him to lead at that level, it's, it surfaced an enemy, all right? And some of you need to recognize that, that the Lord is anointing you at a higher level, but it can surface an enemy, okay? It can surface an enemy, but he is the Lord of breakthroughs, okay? You got to remember that. And so, so you know, he, he got anointed to surface this en enemy, uh, attracted this enemy, but David got a word. What was the word? Verse 19, go up, for I will doubtless deliver the Philistines in your hand. These patterns that we're seeing are very important. They're critical to, to um, uh, working through problems and working through situations, okay? He got a word from God. The Lord said to David, go up and I will deliver. And so God broke through David's enemies like a, like a flash flood. We're learning about flash floods, right? We're only about flooding again, <laughs> right? But flash floods, they can come quick and they can catch people off guard. And the Philistines, I believe, were caught off guard by the speed and force of David. David was a smaller army, okay? The speed and force of David, and they were defeated. But wait, there's more because 2 Samuel 5, 22 to 25 says, then the Philistines went up again and deployed themselves in the Valley of Rephim. And therefore David inquired of the Lord, okay, and something surfaced and he began to say, okay, Lord, what do you have to say about it? And he inquired of the Lord, he said, you shall not go up, circle around behind them, come up upon them in front of the mulberry trees. Verse 24, it shall be when you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the mulberry trees, you shall advance quickly. And some of you in the season, next season, you're going to hear the sound of the Lord and you're going to advance quickly. Okay, and so uh, I like it in the message. When you hear the sound of shuffling in the trees, get ready to move out. It's a signal. God's going ahead of you to smash the Philistine camp. And I like that imagery. Smash him. Just smash him. All right. Um, and David did as the Lord commanded him. He drove back the Philistines um, yeah, from two words I can't really see right. All right. Two cities. All right. So do you remember when the Holy Spirit was speaking to me about bolt cutters? Bolt cutters, all right? Psalm 107. I was just shocked at how many people were like, that's my word, that's my word, you know? Uh, verse 14 in Psalm 107, he brought them out of darkness, shadow of death, and broke their chains in pieces. Verse 16, he's broken the gates of bronze, cut the bars of iron in two. And there's, there's this, this smashing thing that's gonna happen, okay? There's a smashing thing that's going to happen. Let me tell you what, we've entered into spiritual principle. It works every time. There's some smashings that are going to happen. Uh, some chains are going to be broken. Uh, uh, the things that have constricted you are going to be, are going to uh, come off of you and you're going to come into a wider place. All right. So, so what's happening as we fast and pray and decree, um, the Lord of the breakthrough, his army of angels, they're going before you. And God's going to flash flood your enemies. Okay, he's going to smash him. He's going to break chains and gates. He is going to, he's, he's going to break you out. There are people in this room, you need to be broken out of some things. And he's going to break you out. And these Philistines, you know, they've been around since Genesis, but uh, much of the time they were an enemy to the Israelites. Uh, they got absorbed by the Canaanites, but, but the Lord gave the Israelites, he gave their land to his people, okay? So that was the issue. And, and but the thing is, getting rid of a long-term enemy, it takes a break or anointing. A long-term enemy. Um, you know, what are some long-term enemies? They could be a chronic health issue, some of you have been dealing with a health issue so long it's become your identity. When healing is your identity. 
being healed of the Lord. Okay, he's Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, my healer. He, he's healed you, 1 Peter 2, 24. By the stripes of Jesus, you were healed. Past tense. You know, just like you're saved, it's the same, same in, in salvation means more than just being saved from hell and, and given entry into heaven. It also means your healing. It also means your deliverance. Just like you are saved, you are also healed. It's the same. And if you know how to be saved, if you know how to get saved by faith, you know how to, how to get healed by faith. Okay, you just walk right in. Healing's mine, okay? And you be, you've got to lift that identity off of you. It's a long-term enemy. Um, uh, other long-term enemies can be a family problem that does not go away. Uh, it could be a legal issue, and it just doesn't, doesn't go away. Uh, something that's tormenting you, something that's paralyzing you emotionally, and you can't find relief from it. These are long-term enemies, all right? And getting rid of a long-term enemy takes the breaker anointing. But when the breaker steps in, that's Jesus, that's the Holy Spirit, everything has to move. He's the Lord of breakthroughs. And so Micah chapter 2, verse 13 in the message says, Then I, God, will burst all confinements. I prayed this all through COVID, this, this verse right here. Then I, God, will burst all confinements and lead them out into the open. And they'll follow their king. And I'll be out in front leading them. And here's, here's what I know is that so many of you have been in a tight space. You know, it's like you've been penned in by one thing or another. There's been restrictions. There's been, there's been something restricting you. And that's what the Lord is going to lift off of you. These constrictions, they're going to they're gonna come off. Okay, these chains are going to get broken. And so we want to ad- agree and decree that Harvest Church, your mountains are going to move. The breaker has gone before you. So we're talking about Baal Perazim, the Lord of breakthroughs. And what's interesting is, you know, I didn't know this until I started studying this, is that King David, he came from the house of Perez. He, Perez. he came from the lineage of Perez. All right, in Ruth chapter 4, verse 18 to 22, it says, now this is the genealogy of Perez. Perez begot Hezron, Hezron begot Ram, Ram begot Amindab, Amindab begot Nashon, Nashon begot Salmon. These things still bore me in the Bible, but this one was interesting. Salmon begot Boaz, and Boaz begot Obed, Obed begot Jesse, and Jesse begot David. And it says it just like that. It starts with Perez, like in Ruth 4. And it's just really interesting. It starts with him. Um, you know, and what was happening? Well, this is when Boaz took Ruth to be his wife. You remember that whole story? Okay, she's a young girl. He's an old guy, but he took her. And, and, you know, they got married. And the elders blessed him. And they said in Ruth 4, verse 12, may your house be like the house of Perez. Isn't, isn't that fascinating? He's... Perez is like the, the, the name that they're using to bless this couple. Uh, whom Tamar bore to Judah because of the offspring which the Lord will give you from this young woman. Now, why Perez? Well, Perez means breakthrough. And the short story is that Perez was the son of Tamar and the patriarch Judah. And it's a really like racy story. So you can read it in the Bible later. All right. <laughs> it's got the whole thing there. All right? But but she had conceived twins. And when she gave birth to them, um, uh, the one twin, Zira, you know, he started to come out first. And so I guess the practice was they put a little string around the, the arm, the, the wrist of the baby that comes out first so they know which one was the firstborn. Um, but then what happened is Perez, he just shoved him over and came out. <laughs> and he just, he just took control. <laughs> and... But Perez, he broke through, and he came out ahead of his brother, and was, what, why that is significant is because Perez ended up getting the birthright, he ended up getting the blessing of the firstborn, and that was, thus his name Perez, you know, breakthrough. And so he fathered some sons, um, he was the leader of the Perizzite clan, and the family was well respected, and we know because Boaz and Ruth were being blessed. May you be like the house of Perez. And when the the Israelites, you know, they they returned from the captivity in Babylon, um, they chose um, over 450 Perizzites to live in Jerusalem, and that's because they were all outstanding men. You see, your breakthrough it isn't just about you; it's about generations after you. 
And I talk about this a lot, you know, about generational curses, and we got to deal with our generational curses. It's really important we deal with our generational curses. But I'm really not generational curse-minded, to be honest with you, okay? I am breakthrough-minded, okay? I am blessing-minded. I know we have to deal with it. We have to clean it up. You know, we have, we have to work on that. Um, but if there was a generational curse, it's because it was a generational blessing first. And so, you know, we, we've, we've got to lay hold of these generational blessings. But what's fascinating to me is Perez actually established one, that they were a family of breakthrough. Okay? They were a family of breakthrough. I mean, think about it. You know, if all your lineage, everybody just breaks through. And like, you just know, like, there's this thing like, in you, like it, it brings faith in you, like they broke through, they broke through, and I will break through too. And, and so many of you here today and online, you're the curse breaker in your family, you know, in Jesus' name, okay? You're, you're, you're the first one who got away. <laughs> you know, you're the, you're the one who escaped, okay, all the crazies. You know exactly what I'm talking about. They're all, they're all crazy, all right? And like, I'm not gonna, I, goodbye. <laughs> The nuts. And, and you have made a decision. I mean, there's a difference between, anyway, I won't go there. All right, roll it back, because I could go there. But, but you know, um, it, 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 that's a special kind of person, because you're having to clean it all up, clean up, you're doing all the battle with the family demons, all the familiar spirits. You know, and you're just smashing their teeth in one by one. Lord of breakthroughs. You know, new day, new demon. Kill, I'll kill you too. <laughs> All right, look at what happened to the last one, okay? Let's see if you come back, All right? Um, you're having to clean it all up. And you're also having to reset everything at the same time, okay? And, and it, you're a special breed. <laughs> but you're also the break for your family, and you're laying hold of those generational blessings. It's about time. It's about time. Um, you know, and, and you're establishing some new ones in the name of Jesus. And that's why I'm decreeing over you today. You know, your mountains are going to move. The breaker's gone before you. And we need to be breakthrough mind. I'm going to have the worship team come up uh, now. And you need to be breakthrough minded. Okay? Tell your neighbor that. I'm going to be breakthrough minded. Okay, online, type it in, you know, announce it. I'm going to be breakthrough minded because our mountains are going to move. Okay, this is Mark, Mark chapter 9, verse 29 is interesting because that's the boy that the disciples could not deliver. Young boy, he was demonized, couldn't deliver him. Okay, they were up against something. They, they knew that they had been authorized, but they, didn't, they couldn't see it happen. And Jesus said something. It was really, you know, he talked about their faith, their faith level. I believe the Lord is raising our faith level, okay? Raising our faith level. We have to really challenge um, unbelief inside of us. You have to challenge it, okay? You know, you have to challenge those constrictions on your faith and limitations. Um, and, you know, but, but he's told him, he says, this kind comes out by fasting and prayer. Okay, in other words, something about fasting and prayer releases a greater anointing. Something about it. All right, isn't that what we're doing? We're fasting and praying together. Okay, we're coming in agreement. Doing this together. We're, we're making the decree. You know, we're declaring, we're decreeing. Okay, and, and mountains are going to move. When I was um, 47 years old, I... Um, begin to go through something. And um, I had a, a trauma-induced amnesia, you know, and I didn't know how bad it was because you don't remember anything, right? And so my memory started to come back. Um, you know, it's, it's a weird thing. It's actually very psychological. Uh, uh, counselors and psychology people, they, they understand this very well. Well, it's all new for me. And my memories started to come back. Things happened in my childhood that were so horrific, off the charts horrific, um, you know, that I had buried it. I literally buried it in my mind until, you know, I was 47 years old. And I guess I was ready, you know, because uh, whatever you don't deal with is eventually going to deal with you. You know, it's not fair, um, you know, and, and Satan isn't fair. He doesn't play fair. 
but God's word is true. And his word, you know, where he says, uh, you'll know the truth, the truth will set you free. And I have, you know, uh, that he has promised us absolute total freedom. You know, his word is true no matter what happened. And so the reality that I was facing is that I literally had the worst story of anybody in pretty much any room that I was in. I had, I had gone to a whole new category of history and, and it really messed with my identity messed with my identity, um, uh, really just shook me beyond anything I even know how to describe. And I had to make some decisions. I had to say, is God's word true or is it not? Uh, does God help people like me or am I, am I uh, uh, outside of his ability to cure? Because I knew the statistics, okay? The statistics were people with a story like mine, maybe a few of them make, a, make it, but most of them did not. Okay, most of them ended up crazy on drugs, on the streets and everything. That was, that was like what I was looking at. And so I remember, um, like David, and I, you know, I, I've been at this a long time. I've been at this, you know, I've, I've, I know what the word says. I know how to steer myself, even if I'm in pain. You know, I, I know how to, how to where, to, where to lean in. And, you know, King David, when he was facing an old enemy, he, he went to the Lord and he asked for a word. And so I remember asking the Lord, what do you have to say about this? Because this statistically, you know, because I'm that kind of brain, like rationally, logically, you know, statistically, this does not look good. And I said, I need a word from you. And so I remember being in London, I was conferencing in London and I wasn't doing very well, um, you know, uh, emotionally, psychology, psychologically. I wasn't doing very well. Um, and I remember laying there in bed uh, in the morning and it was that, you know, that time where you're, you're sleeping, but you're awake at the same time. You know what I'm talking about? Like that space of time. And so I remember the voice of the Lord came to me. Remember, I've been asking the Lord for a word. And, and the voice of the Lord came to me, and this is what he said. And he said, the devil has tried everything to defeat you. And he said, you didn't get defeated, you got weaponized. Amen. And that's what I want to tell some of you is that the devil hasn't defeated you. And the Lord is weaponizing you. And the breaker's gone before you. And he's the Lord of the breakthrough. And so, what do we do when we have a situation come up or a situation that we're in or something? Okay, we begin to speak to that mountain. That's why I'm saying mountains are gonna move. We begin to speak to that mountain. It's Matthew 17, 20. If you have faith as a mustard seed, you're gonna say to the mountain, move from here to there, it's gonna move. Nothing will be impossible to you. And sometimes speaking to it is you just got that one scripture that addresses the issue. Okay, that one scripture, you know, it, it could be, it could be, I have the mind of Christ. He's, he's restored my soul. And sometimes when you start to speak to something, like let's say you're like, you know, diagnosed crazy. And, and, but you know, the word says, he's given me a sound mind. He's restored my soul. Sometimes faith, like a mustard mother seed looks like this. Well, I guess I have a sound mind. No emotion, don't feel it. No faith, but I, I have that word. I have it in my mouth. Okay, sound mind. And then you say it again. All right, I have, a, I have a sound mind. I have a sound mind. Okay, sound mind. And then something starts to build in you. All right, I have a sound mind. You know what, devil? Get out of my mind. I have a sound mind. Jesus, he gave me his mind. I have, I have a sound mind. And you start to go after it with your words. And the mountain starts to crumble. It starts to shift. It starts to break down, okay? And say, so even if you have a bad day, I still have a sound mind. Even if I'm having a crazy day, I still have a sound mind and I can act sane because I have a sound mind. I have a sound mind. And so Harvest Church, your mountains are going to move. The breaker has gone before you. I'm gonna invite you to stand right now. I'm gonna invite you to stand right now. <clears throat> See, there's some things that are gonna move today. They're gonna, they're gonna move today. 
I remember when I gave my life to Christ and I was in a church service just like this and you know, uh, online, I was in a church service just like this. You know, I was a freshman in college and I was absolutely desperate. I didn't know what to do. Um, my life, my mind was falling apart and I was invited in a church service to give my life to Christ. And I said, yes. Why did I say yes? Because I broke through. I broke through and I didn't look back, okay? And I wanna ask you the question, if you need to get right with God, if you need to give your life to Jesus, if you need to reconnect with Him today, if that's you, I'm gonna to count to three, I'm gonna invite you to raise your hand so I can pray with you, okay? If that's you, if you need to give your life to Jesus, you've got to come back to Him today. You need to break through today. On the count of three, one, two, three, raise your hand and say, that's me, pray for me, okay, 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 all right. If that's you, raise your hand, yes, all over the room today. If that's you online, raise your hand online, let us know, okay, because this is a day of breakthrough. You're breaking through today. And so I want you to just pray. Let's pray this all together, okay? Pray it from the heart. Pray it all together. And just say, Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for dying for my sins. I ask you to come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. And I make you the Lord of my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. I renounce every other spirit but the Holy Spirit. And according to your word, I am now a child of God. Let's give them a hand, let's celebrate.